Good morning, everybody. If everyone can come in and get their seats, please, so we can get started. If anyone is new here, we do not pass a collection plate, but there's a box down at the Welcome Center where you can put your tithes and offerings. Uh, we still need help with the watcher schedule, with, pardon, and the front desk, and most likely the nursery on Sunday morning. Uh, if you want to help with being a watcher, see Debbie. If you want to help with the front desk, see Jerry. If you want to help with the nursery, talk to Beth or to Angie, and uh, they'll get you set up with a time on that. Uh, from God's word this morning, Psalm 66 and verse 2, he says, Sing out the honor of his name and make his praise be glorious. So let's bow for a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you, Father God, that you are worthy of praise. You are worthy of all the honor that we could ever come up with. I just thank you, Father, for who you are. I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to leave behind everything that we drug in here with us this morning. Help us, Father, to focus on you and you alone. Help us, Lord, to, to just come into your presence and sing honor and praise and glory to your name. So we just pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody here need to get in the presence of God? I mean, like, you need it today. I need it. I mean, some days I need it more than others. Today I need it a lot. My eyes on your faithfulness. Oh, God, let me not forget to see. Strength to lift up my hands and 
It's all about you, God. All about you. Let the king of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life. Oh, he is my song, cause you are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails.
king of my heart be the mountain where i run the fountain i drink from oh it's my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where i hide the ransom for my life oh it's And I heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I am never wrong. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Come on. And I. You are perfect in all of your ways. You 
the hearts of man to you. to their experiences, their understanding, their knowledge. Reveal your beauty, God. Reveal your power. Reveal your glory, Jesus. There's none like you. else matters in your presence, God. My joy is complete in your presence.
has a seat upon my heart as a seal upon my heart for there is love that is as strong as death jealousy demanding as the grave strength comes from you, Jesus. You're all I need, God. You're all I need. Come be the fire inside of me. Come be the flame upon my heart. Come fire inside of me until you until
you and I are one. Oh, Jesus. You're all I need, God. You're all I need, Jesus. And I don't want to talk about like you're not in the room I want to look right at you I want to sing right to you I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room I want to look right at you I want to sing right to you I don't want to talk singing this song, all I can see is little Maya and Beth walks to the room and she goes because all her life all her existence all her food all her needs everything she needs walked in the room and her eyes just light up We expect God to touch our hearts before we'll praise Him. We were created for the moment of this. 
That's what he created us for. That's all he wants from us. Is for us to pour out ourselves with praise and longing and desire for him. That's all he wants. We have nothing else to offer him. You're in bondage, you're struggling, you're fighting, you're, you're, your mind is running, you're, you're frustrated. It's all because you're not doing this. God's in the room. All your needs are met. But you won't look to him. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. I want to look right at you. I want to sing right to you. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. I want to look right at you. I want to sing right to you. Come be the fire inside of me. Come be the flame upon my heart. Come be the fire inside of me until you and I are one. Till you and I are one, I will fix my eyes on you, Jesus. Till you and I are one, I pour myself out in praise to you, God. Shake somebody's hands and have a seat. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing. To give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. 
O Lord Most High. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, woo, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, woo, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh-oh, where'd my little poker go? Is it in the sound booth? Is my flipper in the sound booth? I know it was. I checked it, so I don't know where it went. You got it? You sure? It looks like it from here. It was up here earlier this morning. I was testing it. That was the old one. I did. My daughter, check your pockets. She knows me too well. I'm checking them all. It's gone. It disappeared. I did, I was walking around. Is it on this little table right here? Ah. Ah. Somebody stole it. That's not my earring, weirdo. Jeez. Jeez. Darn it. We got another one here somewhere. Is it sitting here in one of the front rows? What am I going to do without it? I can't live. It's living this without you. Oh, sorry. The, is that what it is, the Macarena? Oh, I'm sure that's offended somebody. Woo! Pastor. Mike Offense Green. I'm lost without it. I'm lost without you. You put my, I'm just waiting for my sermon now. Hey, God saw it, we saw it. Life versus death. That's all, that's my sermon. Enjoy today. It's enough said, isn't it? God saw it. We saw it, life versus death. You get it? You get it, got it good? You get it? Life saw it, we saw it, life versus death. That's what it is. When, we, when God sees it, it's life. When we see it, it's death. You're like, what? 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 Back to the next slide. Early in the morning as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, found, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked, Jesus replied, truly I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. I do need the clicker because you guys are totally off left leg here. Just give me that. Yeah, I hear you. We need to be focused on God and his opinion. And this is where we left off last week. And this sermon today is finishing the concept that we left off with last week. When we left off last week, we were talking about how too many of us think too much of our opinion. And we, I threw up there a, a slide that I'm going to put up there again here in a second. And that slide was recording and looking at 
Just a real quick snapshot of the, of the creation of the world. And God did this and God saw it and it was good. And God did this and God saw it and it was good. And God did this and God saw it and it was good. And Eve saw this and she sinned and everybody died. The word saw in these passages refers to a considering of what we see. It's not just about seeing it. It is a consideration of what we see. So our eyeballs are taking in something, and then we consider what we're taking in. We think about it. In other words, we determine, we reason amongst ourselves about what we see, and we make determinations about what we see. And so when God said, and I did this, and it was good, he looked at it, and he considered it, and it was good. Do you understand that? Let's get to this passage, this slide. Here it is. And God called the dry land, God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw, and he considered what he saw with his eyes, and he determined it was good. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit, and the seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw with his eyes, and he considered and made a determination that it was good. In Genesis 1.18, to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw with his eyes and he considered and made a determination that it was good. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw with his eyes and considered it and determined that it was good. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that moved along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw with his eyes and made a consideration and determined that it was good. <clears throat> God saw that he had all that he had made, and he saw it with his eyes, made a determination, or considered it, and made a determination that it was very good. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. And when the woman saw with her eyes and considered it and made a determination, and the Bible actually describes it, that the fruit of the tree, desirable for gaining wisdom, she considered it and determined it was good. See, the problem was she had no business being at the tree. <coughs> Listen about what I'm about to say. It's going to mess with you. How many of you have stood at what you know God said is wrong and you were determining and considering it? You already lost. Her problem wasn't what she came up with. God knew what she was going to come up with. How many of you thought you could go to that party and you thought you could be around those people and you thought you wouldn't do bad things? And how many of you know it didn't work that way? Because you knew it was wrong, and you went and you saw it and you considered it. We already know what you're going to determine. Do you know why we know you're, what you're going to determine? Because you are a wretched, miserable, ridiculous human being. Your mouth is like an open grave. Your tongue is like a viper. I know that if you look upon sin, if you look at what God says is wrong, I know that 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 you will sin. I, I don't know, even know how to tell you this. I, 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 I talk about it all the time. I pray about it. I cry about it. I complain to my wife about it and other people about it. I... I, I sat for hours and hours and hours. Now, you might not believe me, but this is absolutely true. I sat for hours and hours thinking about how to help you all understand things like this. I pray. God shows me things. I write them down. I make notes of them. I pray that God will help you understand what I'm about to share with you today. Listen. 
You need no understanding apart from the word of God, period. If you seek knowledge so that you can be wise apart from the word, you're in self-consideration and we know what your determination is going to be. Promise. I read probably, I don't know, a hundred verses in preparation for this. I did a word search on understanding. Understanding. In the Bible. There's a lot of places in the Bible that say understanding. And for those of you who don't understand that, you have to actually do the word search for understanding in the King James Version, the New King James Version, the NIV Version, okay, and a bunch of other versions so that you can get them all and understand them all. God has no value for your understanding. He just desires your understanding to submit to his word. Eve was standing in front of what God told her not to go to. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever said you weren't going to go there? Said it was wrong. You said it out of your mouth. You, ah, that's going to be wrong. And then, 30 minutes later, you're walking to it to make, a, to, to, to make a consideration, to consider it. The first step is where you failed. Listen, if you know, do you know what God says? Listen, we live in a world where it's so easy to know what God says. You could say, Alexa, what does God say about this? And Alexa will tell you what God says about it. You guys don't believe me. I did this a couple months ago. I was like, I was saying it, and then all of a sudden my phone goes, uh, started talking to me, giving me the answer. It was brain surgery. You have no excuse to rely on your consideration instead of God's word. Well, Pastor Mike, there's some topics that we struggle with today that aren't in the Bible. Alexa knows everybody that's ever preached about the word of God. And she can search all of their preaching if it's online. And she can tell you what the word of God means about a circumstance and how it might fit your situation. <laughs> I wish you could come live in my world. I really do. Because I have such a separation of kinds of people that I work with. I, I see everybody as my equal, but they don't see me as their equal. Okay? And so they, there's some people that I'm the man and I, I'm holding them down. You know what I mean? You know those kind of people. And then there's some people that they think they're equal to me and they're always in arguments with me fighting with me for power and control. But every one of them thinks that I make decisions. <laughs> I'm not sure the last time I made a decision. I mean, unless it was, you got two bathroom toilets, which one are you gonna go to kind of thing. I mean, I walk into Menards, there's three urinals. Which one do I wanna pee in? I don't know what you wanna say. I mean. Maybe I'm making a decision about that. But when it comes to making decisions and determining and considering things, I try my hardest not to. I try my hardest to kill my opinion.
Folks, there's about a dozen of you here this morning sitting here looking at me. I can't even hardly stand to look at you. Do you know why? Because you are lost in your opinion. You are lost in what you think about this thing, that thing, that person, this person, your experience, how you feel. Oh, you're lost in your opinion about how you feel, how other people make you feel. You're in such bondage. And if I look at you, I'm going to say something to you. So I'll just look at the bricks behind your heads on the wall. It's insane. We make, how many of you make decisions based on how you feel? You wake up in the morning. Some of you heard this sermon. I'm going to go here for a second. You wake up in the morning. How do I feel today? Did I get enough sleep? Is it raining outside? Is it warm enough? Do my, does my body ache? Do I feel rested? Who cares about how you feel? Isn't how you feel a consideration? Isn't how you feel an opinion? I had a friend, I wish he was still my friend, but he's, I haven't seen him for years now. And if you, had, if you came in, you're like, man, my toe hurts. He'd say, here, let me see your hand. And he would take your finger and break it. And he's broken a person. He'd, he'd squeeze your thumb. He'd, he'd go, now how's your foot feel? The point was, your opinion is relative to your experience, which means it's a waste of time. If you got up real quick and you hit your foot on this chair and you broke your toe... Listen, some of you would be rolling around on the floor acting like you're dying. You know, what, you know what I mean? And we'd have to get an ambulance to take you down the stairs. A ambulance, right? Okay? But if there was someone out there, some weirdo out there that had your child and you saw them and you got up quickly and broke your toe, you wouldn't care. You'd be going right out there. It wouldn't matter. You wouldn't even notice that your toe was broke till it was over, till the guy was dead. You were on top of him going, <sighs> right? Your opinion about a situation is completely relative to what you think and what you know and what you're experiencing. Some of you can't even... You can't even hold it together for the day if the liquid refreshment that you desire isn't within your reach in a matter of 30 minutes from the time you wake up. There's an injustice going on and someone's going to pay. Man, you're lucky you don't live with me. My kids are like that. I just walk over to the thing they're crying about. I take it away. You never get it again. I don't like these toys. Oh, you don't want toys? Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, yeah, you did. The toys you have, you can't be thankful for. Because you have considered them obsolete. You have considered them not equal to your expectations. So let me ask you this question. What if everyone in the world adopted this mindset that what we think, what we consider, and what we determine is truth? That is where we're heading. 
But what would the world be like? We'd just be killing each other. You can't mess with my truth. You don't know how I feel. You're right, I don't, because it's irrelevant to me. See, when I watched the movie when I was a young man, as inappropriate as it might be, in search for the Holy Grail, when the guard at the bridge was walking around with no arms and no legs and saying, I'm going to chew on your ankle. None shall pass. I took that as that is how I should serve God. So you're like, oh, that explains everything about you, crazy man. That you're sitting there chewing on the soldier's ankle that's going to walk by you because that's all you have left. But by golly, you're going down. <laughs> See, he didn't care how he felt. He didn't care that one arm was lop lopped off. He didn't care that another arm was lopped off. He didn't care that both legs were lopped off. You weren't going by him, by God. Listen, you sat here today because of the sacrifice of men like that. You're free to sit here and worship because there were men like that who served their country and their God like that. Jesus said, no greater love can one have than to lay down his life for his friends. Not make everybody bow down to what you think about life. I know I just let us, left a skid mark on your brain. Let's read this again. When the woman saw with her eyes and then considered that the fruit of the tree was good for food, to the, pleasing to the eye, and also for desiring to be gaining wisdom so she could be like God. So she looked at it and considered with her eyes and her understanding and made a determination about it. She killed everybody. Way to go, Eve. And then her stupid husband's like, hey, what you got there? <laughs> uh, guys, listen. You notice the Bible doesn't record that the man considered. <laughs> no, no, just wait, because I'm, I'm about to land one on you. To whom much is given, much is required, ladies. That's why the spirit of Jezebel can be found way more in women than it can be in men. Oh, we can be in men. Gee, women have so much more intuition, so many more brains than us men. We're just like, <laughs> we're like that, like, like that Labrador retriever. You gonna pet me? You gonna pet me? You gonna pet me? You know? We had this lab once. Dad's downstairs watching this, watching the sermon. But we had this lab once, and he gets so excited when you came home. And he'd go out to the end of the driveway, and Dad's driveway turns the corner like this, comes in about 50 feet, turns the corner, and goes about 60 feet up to the house. And on the corner, there's this uh, telephone post that's about this wide, about this big. And that dog went out there one day, and he's so excited, he's like, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's how us guys are. We're just like, oh, what you got there, huh? Oh, it's fruit, oh, fruit, is it gonna make me smart? Okay, okay. You guys, men, how many of you, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Especially if it's a naked woman in the garden, right? It's like, oh, whatever you want, sweetie, whatever you want. Uh -huh. 
foolish. The Bible didn't record that the man that Adam determined and considered, nope, he just ate. <laughs> oh. And she also gave some to her husband. That was it. He ate it. <laughs> There's no thinking about it, was there? <laughs> okay, thanks. Listen, there's no doubt that God gave us a brain. There's no doubt that God wants us to use it. There's no doubt that God made us intelligent. There's no doubt that most women's brains are way more functional than men's. There's no doubt that they have way beyond understanding for men to communicate with each other, to feel and nurture. I mean, my wife comes in the room and the baby's like, I come in the room and she's like. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, exactly right. Even when she gets excited when I come in the room, she grabs a hold of her mom. <laughs> Look, he's over there, but I have you, you know. <laughs> Weird. She's a girl, that's why she understands. Listen, God doesn't need us to determine. He doesn't need us considering. As I read the Bible, all, all these verses, as you, as you turn over and get more into the New Testament, God tells us to desire understanding from the word. Desire wisdom from his precepts. King James. But at the beginning, and it's peppered with, lean not on your own understanding. So I want to show you that. Let's go to the next slide. Work with me here. Oh, wait. I forgot I have it. The focus needs to be remain in him. Remain in him. Jesus entered Jericho, was passing through. This is Luke chapter 19. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was. Who was he wanting to see? What was he considering? Jesus. But because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. I feel you, Zacchaeus. So he ran ahead and climbed on a sycamore fig tree to, to see him. Probably not the one that Jesus cursed later, but maybe it was. Since Jesus was coming that way, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Now, for those of you that don't know, a tax collector is a scumbag. A tax collector would be considered a drug dealer. No joke. Because the tax collectors back then, they lied, they cheated people, they, had, they were given authority and their authority was almost unchecked. So the majority of tax collectors were just perverse, using their power to control and manipulate people. Okay? For their own gain. So here's Jesus, he sees this tax collector and he says, come down, I want to stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people, what did they saw? So they, with their eyes, they saw something and they began to consider it and they made a determination and they began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner? I'm gonna stop here for a second. Zacchaeus was desiring to consider who? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus' followers were considering what were they considering? This is scary. What were they considering? Jesus' righteousness. What? 
business did they have making any consideration about anybody? Huh? They were considering Jesus' righteousness, Zacchaeus' righteousness, right? What it was going to look like to everybody else. They sure were busy in their considerations. And I'm sure it was all with good intentions, right? What were the good intentions? They could say, well, they're trying to protect Jesus' righteousness because he needs us to protect his righteousness, right? What were their intentions? Self-importance. You guys know, if you could point out a problem with somebody sitting across from you, you feel better about yourself, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, why do you think I go to Walmart? I shouldn't have said that. Because I was at Kroger the other day and I saw somebody. I was like. <laughs> then I was like, oh wait, I'm in Marion. Oh my gosh. I used to go to sit on the bench at Walmart so I could make myself feel better. Well, at least I'm not like that person. Right? Anybody ever been there? Sitting there considering. Considering what those people look like compared to what I look like, right? What those people are like compared to what... Have you ever been there? Do you know that's like the worst sin in the world? It's so horrible. Hey, how many of you guys, you don't even mean to, your brain goes there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Dale's like, not me, I'm pure in all my ways. They were considering Jesus' righteousness. Now, what business were they considering his righteousness? Why were they worried? I'm just protecting you, Mike. I'm just protecting you. I'm just worried about you. I got people come to me. I'm just worried about you, man. Really? Thanks for worrying. How about you pray for me instead of being worried about me? Because trust me, your considerations aren't going to get us anywhere but death. See, here's, here's what we have to, here's what I need you to agree with me on today. That your considerations and determinations lead to death. Could you, some of you are like, well, I don't know if I want to say that. Okay, well then figure it out. I'll be here for you. <sighs> But I just want you to know, I try my hardest not to make considerations and determinations because I'm tired of hurting people. If God wants me to go somewhere, he's got to do a lot more than give me a dream. If God wants me to do something, he's got to do a lot more than just bounce an idea off the wall and let it hit me in the face. Because I'm not determining anymore. I'm not making considerations about what I think God was trying to say. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm done playing that game. I've long since come to the conclusion that God really doesn't need a whole lot of this that's going on up there. But you know who does need it to be valued? My flesh. And I'm supposed to be killing that thing, not feeding it. I'm not even done, folks. I'm going to step into some of you in this room, and it's going to be hard. And you guys think a lot of other people have left. Just wait until you see what's going to happen after this. I'm like that old Sal. You push me, all you're going to do is get a fight. I got some people down in Cincinnati. They know that now they know that I keep all of my 
correspondence. I actually, every, every document I make, I make it and save it as the date of the document. Any changes I have back to 2002. I get people call me up. Uh, I'm like, oh wait, I'll send you that email. What? You have that email from 2003? Yes. Seriously? Yes. Don't pick a fight with somebody who likes to fight. I won't fight you with my understanding and considerations. I will only fight as God leads me to. We, we probably should wait for the one lady that left to come back. Evan, are you recording this? Well, last week it didn't record. Evan. 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 Evan, are you recording this? Okay, cool. We don't need to wait. She can listen to it some other time. Listen. Will you agree with me that God doesn't need your consideration and determinations? Now, you say yes, but we're going to go deeper. So I need you to agree with me so we can go deeper. Okay? Because I'm going to go on that vein of, unless you get your certain kind of refreshment in the morning, you can't be happy. Your joy is tied to what you have considered and determined that you think you need. Whew. Take every vain imagination captive and submit it to the knowledge of God. That's what the Bible says. Any thought of what we think we need, any thought of what we think we desire, any thought of what we think is good, i.e. Eve talking to the serpent, leads to death. Anybody ever had a decision to make? Anybody ever been tormented by that decision? It wasn't God. What do you mean? Oh, I don't care. I don't, I don't really care what the, what the result was. The torment wasn't God. You were caught up in death. You thought that you needed to decide. You thought you needed to gather all the facts and make a consideration and determine. That's what was death. Listen. Have ever trained a child who wanted to obey. Some of you are like, I've never had a child that wanted to obey. That's your curse. Mm, wonder what you did. Anyways, um, I got a couple that are like, that they want to obey, so I'm feeling pretty good about myself. Not. No, I just got to wait around for a while, then they won't want to obey, trust me. Just If they're in a season in their life where they want to obey, just enjoy it. Because <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> Pain comes in the morning when you're raising kids. Anyways, but if you have a kid that wants to obey, do you know how easy it is to train a child that wants to obey? Would you ever take a child who wants to obey, they're trying their hardest and they don't understand, would you ever take that child and discipline it because it couldn't understand what you were trying to say? No. What would you do? You would do everything to help that child understand what you're trying to help them see, right? Because you love the child and you know the child wants to obey you. How much more does God love you? There's, so, there's a lot of self-righteous ninnies in the church in America and in the world. And they like to teach people that if you're spiritual, you'll hear God the first time. 
If you're deep in the Lord, if you're really where you need to be, God could just, you ever hear this? This is just so taken out of context. It's so evil what I'm about to say. You'll hear the small whisper of God's voice. If you're spiritual, if you're really in tune to God, all God's going to do is whisper. And you'll hear his voice. Do you know that that is someone who's probably never, ever walked with God on a consistent basis for a long time? The person saying that doesn't know how God moves in people's lives. There is no gold star. You don't get extra bonus points for hearing him the first time. But you know what happens? If Satan can convince you, listen to what I'm about to say. If Satan can convince you that you're more spiritual, if you're able to hear God's voice the first time, you'll start considering and making determination. Because Satan knows if I can just get them to think that they have something to do with obeying God. That their mind has something to do with obeying God. Then I've got them. Because I just need them to walk up to the tree. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you, you've been serving God for a long time and you considered and you made a determination and you felt pressured to consider and make a determination? Any of you? About something that God was telling you to do? Any of you? And how many of you made the wrong choice? Yeah. Satan was whispering to you. Oh, you're smart enough. You're, you're hearing God's voice. Satan will, listen, I've seen it happen. It's actually happening to some of you right now. It's really amazing. Some of you, so one of you is listening on the, on the TV and you don't think we know who's watching on TV. So you think you're going to sneak in and watch. Okay. It's okay. I don't really care if you're watching or not. I just want you to hear the word of God. Okay. But Satan will actually convince you to go talk to somebody in the church who isn't a real believer and call them godly counsel. Because you know what they'll say. As a matter of fact, the leadership in this church calls it shoppers. People are shopping for counsel. What do you mean you're shopping for counsel? Well, they know what Pastor Michael say, so they're not going to ask him. People used to go ask my wife. They don't ask my wife anymore. They don't ask Laura no more. They don't ask Chris no more. They don't ask Angie no more. Why? They'll actually call me. They'll call me and say, hey, so-and-so asked me this question. Have you talked to them? Nope. Oh. They're shoppers. Satan will actually, when you're trying to consider and make a determination about God's will, Satan will actually con convince you to seek counsel from people that aren't really godly. And you'll shop. You go and shop in. Well, that store doesn't have what I want. Let's go to the next store. Oh, I like that. You're shopping. Once a year, I go shopping. About one or two, three days in a row, I'll go shopping once a year. What do you mean shopping? I, I mean, I go shopping. Like, I'll have a big list of everything that everybody I'm buying presents for. Yeah, it does. And, and some of them I know what I want, so I just go in and get it. That's not shopping. And there's some of them I'm like, hmm, I don't know what to get them. Let's go shopping and you go around to the different stores and you look at the, what they have and see if that's what you want for that person 
And so many of us, when we go see godly counsel, we go shopping. We go and get a little bit of counsel from them, and oh, I don't, oh okay, we'll go over here. And, and that way, when I go to tell my spiritual authority that what I'm doing, I can tell them that I went and sought godly counsel. But the reality of it is, is that's not what's happening. What's happening is you are considering and making a determination. Now listen to what I'm about to say. And you are controlling the information coming in so you can make the determination that you want to make. Have ever talked to somebody and you knew you were wrong but you and they were talking to you and you knew they were right and so you didn't want to talk to them no more? You just do that naturally, don't you? See, for those of you in the program, I teach this a lot. You weren't seeking truth. You were trying to make truth. See, when you seek truth, so, so let's tell you this. This is a little bit deeper than some of you. I might lose some of you, so I'll have to make it really quick. But I work in marketing, right? And about 30 years ago in business, marketing was all about massaging truth. You would do data, and the data person would get the data, and he'd massage it to make it say what he wanted to say. And so about 15 years ago, data uh, analysis became very easy. And about five years ago, they've created programs where you can actually do it yourself, right? And so all of a sudden, it bypassed the middle people that were trying to massage the truth, and now all the retailers only want real data. And they want all the data. And if you go in and present a presentation without all the data, they'll kick you out of their office. If you're trying to massage the data, they will kick you out because they're seeking the truth, not an agenda. See, Jesus said he wanted you to have understanding. God says he wants you to have understanding. And he wants you to have wisdom. And he wants you to be able to consider and make a determination, but not with your mind. With his word. And that's why he tells you to hide it in your heart. That's why he tells us to study it. That's why he tells us to study it and show ourselves approved is we'll hide his word in our heart. That's why he wants us to do that because otherwise we'll make considerations and determinations with our minds. And our minds are deceitfully, incurably wicked. How many of you guys have ever been tricked by your mind? I look in the mirror every day and go, dang, that's sexy. That's a lie from the devil. My wife would be like, I think it's sexy. I'm like, you're a liar. But I love it. She'll say, that's not what's sexy, honey. What's sexy is your heart for God and your passion. Oh, good, because I'm just going to get worse from here. <laughs> yeah. So what are you seeking? See, did Eve go to the tree seeking the truth? No. She went to the tree seeking self-importance or value. And by the way, we're all wired that way. That's why we can't make considerations based on what we feel, know, and understand. We're all wired that way. Uh, trust me, I, I was in children's ministry and youth ministry for 30 years, folks. You can't talk to a parent about their child. My kid's not like that. You're like, that was a waste of time, wasn't it? So then you turn into the prophet. Well, if in my consideration, if you don't stop letting the kid do this, this is what's going to happen. If you stop them, maybe they'll have a heart for God. Maybe they'll see God. And they're like, oh, my kid's not like that. And you're like, okay. And then God lets you stick around that person for about 10 years until what you said happens. 
and you know their heart when they leave the church or they stay and, and repent. Been there, got the t-shirt. Seen it way more times than I want to see it. It was funny last week. I found out that somebody was angry with me about something I said because they thought I was talking about them. And I wanted to say, gosh, I haven't thought about that person in about five months. What are you talking about? I wasn't considering and making determinations based on the people listening. I was trying to focus on God and say what God wanted me to say. If it fell on you and hit you in the head and knocked you out, you probably should have moved. Reminds me of being at the restaurant with my kids and we have this favorite thing, don't ever give us straws with paper over them. Every one of my kids, I swear to you, Amaya's gonna do it in just a couple months. They all have know exactly how to rip the paper off real gently so that you can blow it. And they become missiles. And just because I hit the guy two booths away doesn't mean I cared about him. It doesn't mean I was considering that he was sitting over there. I was just trying to blow the missile. You see what I'm saying? And, and you'd say, well, you shouldn't have blown the missile. What, what, but see, in preaching, it's my job to preach. So I can't say I shouldn't have preached. I mean, some would say that. And then I followed up with, well, then why were you watching? If you thought I shouldn't be preaching, why were you watching? Just because you got in the hit in the head with my missile doesn't mean I was shooting it at you. I was just shooting missiles. Right? Well, Pastor, I don't think, I don't think when I come to church I should be hit with missiles. This is the wrong church for you. Oh, 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 it is my job to run around in between every row and stomp on everybody's toes. If I, what, do you want me to fluff your pillow and tell you how good you are? Do you want me to lie to your face? You want me to tell you that you should walk around and think about the things you see and make considerations about them and, and determine? Is that what you want me to do? Because if it is, well, I was praying this morning. God said I couldn't leave. So guess what? You got to go. All the people saw this and they began to mutter. Rabble, 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 rabble. Murmur, 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 murmur. Mutter, 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 butter, 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 butter. You ever been around people doing that? I think this and I think that. And I don't think he should have done that. I don't think they should have did that. And, I, and I, why did they have to do it like that? You ever been around people like that? You ever, any of you ever do that? The per, you know the person said the truth to you, but you didn't want to hear it, so you complain about how they said it. Well, if you'd have said it nicer, then maybe I would have taken it, but you were mean to me, so I'm not, I don't have to listen to it. I'm allowed to disregard it, even though it's truth, because you didn't say it in an appropriate way that made me feel good. And then you, this is what I always follow up with. Well, what exactly is it? How exactly do you want me to say it in the future? And as soon as they're done, I say, okay. Well, here, let me say it like that then. What 
doesn't work that way, Mike. It doesn't work that way. You can't just expect me to forget what you did a few minutes ago. Really? So I guess it didn't, how I said it wasn't really the problem, was it? Hmm. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he is gone to be the guest of the sinner. They had made a consideration about what Jesus did. They knew, now think about this. I want you to really think about how evil your mind is. They knew he was the son of God. They knew he was the creator of the universe. And they still were murmuring about what he did. Now listen, listen, if you think you can trust your mind, your feelings, and your emotions, you are dumber than you look. I mean, we all look dumb. Listen, there, you know, there's a few of you that are pretty handsome and beautiful in this room, but you're not that beautiful and handsome, okay? We all look ridiculous. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here, and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I have cheated. If I have cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. Look at what Zacchaeus did. See, Zacchaeus got up, and he wanted to make a consideration about who? Jesus. How did he approach Jesus? With repentance and the word. How did the others approach it with their considerations and their feelings about how they felt about Jesus going over to that sinner's house? Think about it. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house. Whose house? Zacchaeus's. Because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. Let's go a little further here. While they were listening, this follows up, this passage. So Jesus goes and he deals with them now. This is right after that passage. He's going and he's dealing with them. Dealing with what? The people that were murmuring. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. The people what? Thought, considered, and determined. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to, give, to have himself appointed king and then return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 meanness. But this money... Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But this, his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, sir, your menia has earned 10 more. Well done, good and faithful servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of 10 cities. So what did the first servant know? What was the first servant concerned with? The desire of who? The king. Listen how your evil heart works. All three servants here understood the desire of the king. Two of them looked at it from the perspective of the king. They desired the king's wishes. One of them looked at it from their perspective. We'll go on. Second came, sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. 
I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. Now, first of all, let's just go look past the fact that this man assaulted verbally the king. Okay? Let's dive a little deeper into this man. The, two, the first two servants, did they think they were equal to the king? No. Does this servant think he's equal to the king? Yes. Yes. I'm going to tell the king what I think. Well, you just go right ahead. I'm sure he's worried about it. I was afraid of you. What does that tell us about this man? He was thinking about it. He was considering it and making determinations that caused him to be fearful. He saw the king as a hard man. Is that a true statement or is that a determination? It's a determination. <laughs> what do you mean? Do you know how many people tell me that my idea of who God is is harsh? Is that a determination? Or is that truth? That's a determination because I only share what God says in his word. That's an opinion. Do you know the next statement is an opinion? You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. Who is he? He is the king. Doesn't he own everything? Doesn't the king own everything? So why are you saying he takes out what he did not put in? Because everything is in. Oh, you wake up. Come on now, you wake. All right. I looked down and you were sleeping. You had, your, eyes, your eyes were closed and you had a funny look on your face. So I figured you were sleeping and having a dream about Josh. Anyways. She's snuggling when she calls that Josh. She's snuggling Josh. Or she can't snuggle him yet, so she snuggles this. Listen, listen. Who owns everything that man was working with? The king. Who owned the opportunity that was given to that man? The king. How many of you? You made a determination that it was, now listen to what I'm about to say. Some of you, you need to let this hit you hard. So, listen, some of you have been holding on to bitterness about something because you determined it was one thing and you determined wrong because you didn't look at it from God's perspective. You were deciding it based on how you felt and what you experienced instead of just believing God. Many of you, God has allowed things to happen in your life and it wasn't your burden, it was your opportunity. And you have cursed yourself. You have missed every opportunity you had because you were still focused about how you looked at it and what you considered it to be and what you had determined it was. And you're still looking for people to see it from your perspective so you can be validated in your selfish determinations.
You don't know what happened to me when I was a kid. I don't care what happened to you when you were a kid. It's not bigger than God. God owns everything. If you will look at it from his perspective, it will bless you. It is your opportunity. If you look at it from your perspective, it will be the end of you and Satan will wipe the deck of the ship of God with your rear end and then toss you overboard. You don't think I know what I'm talking about? I've watched people go from person to person in a church for months and even years looking for people to pity them and feel sorry for them because they felt bad about what happened to them. And when they finally exhausted every group of people in the church, they went out into the world and sinned and were destroyed. Well, listen, you could be free right now. All you got to do is stop it. Ask Jesus to kill your perspective. Don't you dare trust it. Aren't you glad you're going to get a new body? You're going to get a new mind? I was listening to somebody last night, and they were like, you know, when we get to heaven... God's really going to have to teach us some things. And they were like, oh, no, 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 you don't even understand. When we get to heaven, we're, gonna, we're not going to have any sin. Our mind's going to be renewed. You know how we're supposed to renew it in Christ and renew it in the word, right? When we get to heaven, it's going to be like, Poof. and we're going to see things like God sees them. Now, I want, you, I want you to stop and think about this. You guys are, how many of you guys have read the Bible and read where Jesus healed people? Anybody? Now, listen to what I'm about to say, because this will blow your stinking mind. Imagine Jesus coming in where Lazarus was buried, and all the people are all upset and whining and crying, and some of them are even angry at Jesus because he... He could have been there earlier, but he took his good old time, and he doesn't understand, and he doesn't care about me. <laughs> right? Could you imagine Jesus showing up and going, oh, you poor things. No, Jesus walked in there, and the pain and the suffering that was being experienced, to him, it was like, think about the joy they're going to have when I call that boy out of that grave. Man, this is awesome. Why did he drag his feet? Because he wanted to make sure Lazarus was stinking. He wanted to make sure his body was rotting and decaying before he got there. You want to know why your prayers aren't being answered? Because you can't. Shut your mouth long enough to read your word and see it from God's perspective. You can't turn off your tears long enough. You can't. There's not enough drugs to make you forget how you feel, folks. Unless you want to die, go to hell, and then, oh, you'll feel all right. Satan's like, release the Kraken on them. <laughs> so the servant says, I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and you reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you? 
I want you to stop right there. For those of you who think that sarcasm is not Christ-like, that was sarcasm. Oh, you knew, did you? Tell me what you knew. And by the way, this sarcasm wasn't being used to build him up at all. That I am a hard man. Taking out what I did. Listen, listen, listen. I just want I'm gonna, for those of you that are, that we got this little joke that nobody else understands, okay? There's a Bible study we were doing, and uh, I just stepped into it at the end. I was like, well, time out. This is ridiculous, okay? The person that wrote that Bible study wasn't okay with the king being in charge. They want the collective to be in charge. Because the king can be as sarcastic as he wants. And he doesn't care how it makes you feel. Anybody ever had God put some sarcastic idiot at your job? Yeah, I know, right? Put Christian there, right? Uh huh. And you're like, God, why'd you do that to me? Because God's trying to teach you to stop worrying about what you think and care and determine. God's trying to teach you to stop worrying about what you consider. Listen, or you'll never be able to be happy in any relationship. You knew, did you, that I'm a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have at least collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one that has 10. Now listen, the people standing by in their consideration and determination said, he already has 10. That's not fair. Oh, I just, oh, oh, uh uh-oh. Uh-oh. I just made some enemies on the left side. Not over here. (laughs) Take his meaning away from him and give it to the one who has 10. They said, he already has 10. I love it how they say, sir, sir. Like, were you trying to suck up to him? You are, you are raising, now listen to what these people are doing. They're raising their consideration and determination up to equality with the king. Sir, I'm going to respect you. <clears throat> Hi. It's nice to see you. <laughs> right? Sir, he already has 10. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. You ever read Revelation? You ever read Revelation? You ever hear the bowls of wrath? Not the grapes of wrath, the bowls of wrath. God's like, pour that one out next. He's a jerk. He's inconsiderate. Doesn't care about anybody but himself. Listen, you ever hear that? You ever hear that? You ever hear that? 
You ever hear that in the back? He's a jerk. Doesn't care about anybody but himself. That's Satan talking to you. Stirring up your determinations and your considerations. Stirring them up. Mm, mm, yeah. Yeah. Make a choice. Make a decision. Come on now. It's not fair. He has no right. You, you think I'm joking? Who does he think he is? He's the king. He does what he wants. If you align yourself with him, what he wants to do will bless you. If you don't and you determine and consider against him, what he does will land on your head. And it won't be a paper straw. It'll be a missile. John, Job 37, 5, 8. God's voice thunders in marvelous ways. He does great things beyond our... Aren't you glad he does things beyond our understanding? So why are you arguing with him when he does things beyond your understanding? You like it when he does things beyond your understanding, but you fight with him all the way there. Why? He says to the snow, fall on the earth, and to the rain, shower, be a mighty downpour, so that everyone he has made may know his work. He stops all people from their labor. The animals take cover, they remain in their dens. That's who God is. We don't understand. Isaiah 55, 7, 11, let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Now listen. A wicked and unrighteous person is someone who is looking for value apart from God. Do you understand that? Eve went to the tree looking to be like God, not need God. It's a big difference. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. If you're righteous and you desire God, then you don't have to forsake your thoughts. And... Wait, what? If you're righteous and you desire God, you don't have to forsake your thoughts. Because you just, every thought that comes, you line it up with the word and you go, oh, that's cool. Every thought that comes and you line up with the word and it's bad and you go, oh, that's stupid. You don't have to forsake them. You can enjoy them. You don't have to forsake your feelings. You can enjoy them. You don't have to forsake your understanding. You can enjoy it as long as you compare it to the Word of God. I had someone come into my office a couple of weeks ago and they said, I really have these thoughts and feelings about this one person who's married. What is that again? Why, I keep having these dreams and these feelings about this one person who's married. It's of the devil! <laughs> I, that's exactly what it says. You know, I don't even have to pray about that. Because I know the word of God. We don't even have to be, listen, listen to what I'm about to say. You don't even have to be intimidated by your thoughts, feelings, and emotions. You don't even have to be afraid of them. You don't even have to be scared of them. You don't have to have any anxiety over how you feel, what you think, anything. Because in the Lord, if I take every thought captive and submit it to the word of God, it's no big deal. I said, well, you know what? If you have that dream again, just look at it and bind it in the name of Jesus because God said, what you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. Don't worry about it. Huh. 
Not what they were looking for, was it? It's real easy. You can take, so tell me, somebody shout out a feeling and emotion that you feel. Shout out, anger. Anger, what about, what's you angry about? Everything. Bind it, take it against the knowledge of God. Say, I'm not going to listen to you, anger. I'm not going to listen to you. It's of the devil. I bind you in the name of Jesus. I promise you, Jesus will bind it. Chris, enough. So slap, Dylan, slap him. Yeah, he's like, whatever. I've tried for years. Listen, listen, you don't have to be afraid of how you feel, what you think, what you're determining, what you're considering, as long as you desire righteousness in Christ. Listen, listen. What would, so you guys come in, how many of you come on Wednesday nights to small groups? I know I'm going long, and I know nobody will want to come to our church anymore if the pastor keeps preaching longer than 30 to 40 minutes, okay? It's okay. How many of you want me to finish? How many of you want to go? Okay, go. Go. Bye. Listen. Got me all, got me all confused. What? Got me out of my box. Yeah, you did. Jesus says, "For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways," declares the Lord. If you get used to grabbing every thought and every determination and every consideration that comes across your mind. If you get used to comparing it to the word of God, it'll become second nature to you to throw out those thoughts. <clears throat> How many of you guys get mail? You guys still get mail? Anybody of you get email? How many of you have automatic things that go through your email and throw out the bad ones? Okay. Did you know the same thing? Well, listen to what I'm about to tell you. The same thing submitted to God can be your spam filter. The same thing that haunts you and ruins you and completely makes your life miserable, your mind, if you submit it to God and his word and you keep pouring his word in there, that thing can be your spam filter, and it can bless you rather than curse you. But there's got to be one thing, one thing, that's the most important thing, and that is the database and the spam filter. And what is the database in our spam filter of our mind? The Word of God. If it lines up to the Word of God, it passes through. If it doesn't, <laughs> so if you're struggling, now listen to what I'm about to say. If you're struggling in your mind with feelings and emotions and considerations and thoughts, you ain't got enough word in there. You ain't got enough word in there. And I bet you your mind's not desiring the word either. That tells us something more. You've been given over to the enemy. Oh, don't you say that about me. I'm bought with a price. I said a prayer when I was 10. I'm sealed. It up. I didn't say you're going to hell. I said you're given over to the enemy. There are going to be a lot of people who get to heaven and God's going to look at them and go, where have you been for the last 40 years? They're like, where's my mansion? He's like, uh, like, you know, all the mansions are over here to the right. And the west side on the other side of the tracks are over here. <laughs> and they're going to be like, which house is mine? 
he's going to be like, uh, over here, sweetie. Uh, and, then, and then, you know what? What's going to be awesome is it doesn't matter because you're going to be like, the love shack is a little, oh, sorry. <laughs> right? You're still going to, hey, it's in heaven. That's all that matters, right? Is it? Is it all that matters? Really? You don't want to take the next 40 years and glorify God? You don't want to take your big crown with many jewels and cast it at his feet and give him praise? You just want to drop a nickel and say, thanks for getting me to heaven, God. Huh? Really? Here's a question for you. Are there going to be trash collectors in heaven? I don't know. You tell me when you get there. Sorry. That was just me. It's like, Pastor Mike, that's mean. Any, any toilet cleaners in heaven? I don't know. Guess you'll let me know when you... Never mind. You could spend the next 40 years fighting with God about how you feel. And what you think. Or you could spend the next 40 years glorifying and bringing honor and glory to God and advancing his kingdom upon this earth and declaring his goodness and going from glory to glory to glory to glory. This does affect the quality of your life. I'm not telling you that if you submit your mind to Christ and the word of God, that you will go from nothing but good things in your life to nothing but good things in your life. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about every fight you win. Oh, it might look like you lost, but you win in the end. Okay? I'm excited about this. I don't know if you guys are excited. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts, your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, that is the same, same thought process as the last one, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and the bread of the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it, if you remain in his word. Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seemeth right to a man, but in the end, therefore, are the ways of death. God saw, we saw, life and death. Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but in the end, thereof are the ways, of, wait, is that the same one? Nope, it's just a totally different one. Just needed to say it again, because we're dense. Totally different situation, right? Anybody dense? Anybody can't get out of themselves? Psalm 119.34, give me understanding so that I may keep your law. I don't want understanding so I'll know. I want understanding so I'll keep your law. Do you understand this? You can seek understanding for his word, his precepts. So that I can keep your law and do what? Obey it with all my heart. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. There it is again. Wow. That's weird. He would say it so many times. Now listen. I told you I was going to step into you. I'm going to step into you. Then I'll be done because you might want to. Whoever's watching me will come up here. Rob, come up here and. Let's quench the fiery darts. Not yet. Not yet. When I'm done, just protect me. Listen. How many of you have opinions? How many know what they are? How many of you, you have opinions and you know what they are because you keep a record to see if you're going to be right? Let's 
Let's get a little closer. How many have opinions of how your spouse interacts with you? How much time they spend with you? How much money they spend on you? How much they do for you? How many of you have opinions about other people around you? How many of you like to tell people what you think about it? Why? Why? Hmm? Folks, this isn't just about remaining in a place where God wants you to be. This is about you being a blessing to everyone God has around you instead of a pariah who's gnawing and chewing on people. Trying to get from them the sustenance and the value that they think they need. Would you bless somebody? Why don't you walk around? Does, does God say he's going to make you somebody that has a river of living water flowing out of you? Is that what he says about you? Listen, there's a spirit. I'll just say it. There's a spirit going around in the, in the shadows of this church. It's a Jezebel spirit. It's so bad that people, when they see people walk in a room that are consumed by that spirit, people just turn around and walk away. I don't even want to. It's insane. Can't tell you how many times this week I've had to look at people and say, I know, right? I know I really make you angry. I know you really don't like me. But unfortunately, God made me the pastor. I'm not always going to be right. But you need to treat me like I am. Unless it's against the word of God. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry it makes them mad. I'm sorry they're in that situation. I'm sorry they're so eaten up with a dumb butt of selfishness that they... <laughs> you know, you see it. You see it on them. Just walk up and move their cheese just a little bit. <laughs> Some of you think that I do that to be an antagonist. No, I'm testing the spirits. You think I'm joking? Just walk up and go, oh, there it is. Look at that. Would you look at it? Would you just look at it? Just look at it. Look at it right there. Well, it didn't take much to find that. Now did it. I dare you. I dare you. Somebody in this room, you try it. We, li we leave out of here. First of all, some of the people are mad because I'm going to one o'clock. Sorry. Thanks for your determination and your consideration. I dare you. Go home. When you're on your way home and your spouse was hoping to go somewhere for lunch or have a certain thing for lunch, say, we're, go we're not going to do that. We're going to do something else. See what happens. See what happens. See what happens. My wife's like, oh, I can't wait to do this to him. <laughs> Just see what happens. I love it when it happens to me because I'll go. 
And then I'll be like, oh. Mm. Yeah, just, would you just look at that? Look at that. Look at that selfishness rising up. It's rising up in it. Did you ever go to see those churches? You gotta rise up. What, for Jesus or for what we want? It's about time God's people rised up and took back that, what the enemy has stolen. <laughs> what we taking? What are we rising up for? <laughs> We're rising up to glorify Jesus or to get stuff? <laughs> Don't let nobody tell you how to live your life. Well, dude, that's what Christianity is all about. Listening to the king. Submitting to the king. King, what'd you say? Oh, look what the king said. Some of you like, I, I'm like some of you look at me like I lost my mind. I dare you to do it to yourself. I dare, listen, so some of you are, you think you're spiritual, right? And you probably are. So I'm, I'm depending on the Holy Spirit to do this to you today. And when he does it, I want you to text me what it was about, okay? I want you to testify that you submitted to God instead of your, yourself. Some of you are gonna be about to partake in the thing that you want. And the Spirit's gonna go, can I have that? And I want you to do it to yourself. I want you to say, can I just put up my mouth and suck on it for a second? I'll spit it back out, right? Anybody ever done that? Anybody ever done that? Chris, you've done that, haven't you, Chris? Haven't you? Haven't you? Just put a, just put a little bit in there. Just put a little bit in there. Okay, take it back out. I won't, I won't breathe in and I'll just put it to my mouth. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? I dare you today. Listen to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit says, why don't you just give that up for me, just for this once. I dare you to do it. I dare you to take the word of God and the moving of the Holy Spirit and listen to it over what you want and think. Practice it in the little things. You know, the Bible calls this something, it's really interesting, it calls it fasting. It's where you exercise so that the Jezebel spirit, spirit doesn't overwhelm you. No. How many of us have ever raised little kids, right? And how many of you thought that the little kid was playing you? Anybody know what I'm talking about? All of a sudden you're like, wait a second, they're playing me. You know what I mean? And so what do you have to do? You tell them, for no good reason, you just say, no. The, 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 the ones that are completely eaten up with the Jezebel spirit will just lose their minds. The ones that are using it and they're really, really conniving, they'll be like, well, why? Basically what they're saying is, what is it that I need to do to get you to do what I want you to do? Anybody ever done that? With your spouse? With somebody at church? What is it that I need you to do? That I need to do to get you to do what I want you to do? Can you get another smoke break, Pastor Mike? Pastor Mike, can you get another smoke break? We were good today, Pastor Mike. We did this, we did this, we were good today. Can you get another smoke break, Pastor Mike? Can I, can I, can I, can I? Jezebel. <laughs> I dare you, I dare you. Challenge yourself. Sometime today, you're going to get ready to partake in something you really want. 
And I don't want you to give it up just because I said it. I don't want you to give it up unless the Spirit of the Lord goes, what are you doing? Give me that. I dare you. I dare you. This is your opportunity to deny yourself. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. <laughs> Ooh, did he really? Yeah. He said that if you love your life or you desire a good life, you will lose it. But if you desire a life with God, you will gain it. Huh. Did he really? Yep, he sure did. Listen, how many of you agree today that you're going to practice killing your opinion? Let's kill it. It ain't worth it anyways. My opinion's gotten me in nothing but trouble, right? Nothing but trouble. Nothing but trouble. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you for your word today. I thank you for your presence. I thank you that your word just came to life and shook us, woke us up. Your paper torpedo hit us in the forehead. God, let it be more than just a moment. Let your spirit bear witness with us. Today, this afternoon, tomorrow, throughout the week. When we get upset with people because things aren't going the way we want them to be, let your spirit tap us on the shoulder. Say, what are you doing? There it is. God, I, I ask you today to reveal to us our opinions. Show it. Say, that's, there it is, there it is, there it is. And we'll submit them to you. And we'll take them to your word. And none of us are going to do gymnastics with the word to try to validate our opinions, God. And if we do, smack us. God, I love you today. I thank you. I know that you're going to set us free. I know you desire to set us free. So we can love one another. We can minister to one another. We can take up our cross and lay down our lives for you and for those that you've called us to. We give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a good day, folks.